Clint, I can't play that music because uh, YouTube will flag my video because I'm listening to the radio in the background. Can you believe that? It's really, think about it for a minute. You can't even have a radio on behind you without a copyright violation. That's how crazy our fucking world has gotten where every single aspect of every single thing we do is viewed in terms of profit and loss. Like, oh, yo, you have that song on the background there while you're talking, which gives us copyright, which means we own your video because you're playing it in the background, even though you have no control over over playing. Or right, you want to get in there? Okay, go ahead. I'll go over here. You go over there. Okay. I don't like being in a rush. I hate it, as a matter of fact, so I'm going to relax here. In the right lane of slow, slow boat down. We're on Burnside today. <sighs> Whoa, yeah, well, we're in the right lane here too, which is a very, very bad lane. Oh, how about the Spanish channel is safe. I can keep, uh, I can have Spanish music on behind me. And I don't run into copyright when I do that. They don't care about that Spanish music. They just care about the American. Uh, look at them rushing up the Burnside. It's such a bunch of ignorant people. I don't know what it is when you put people in the car. Ordinarily very nice people just go crazy when they get behind the wheel. I mean, they're... It's hard, I really have a hard time understanding what it is it about the automobile that drives people to mass insanity. And I mean, it is mass insanity the way, look at this road, for example. Would you want really want to be rushing up this road? Well, that's what they do. And I, I, for, for the life of me, I don't understand why people can't just relax a little bit on the road. It's, I just, I will never understand what it is about the automobile that drives people to this kind of insanity where there's 30, 40, 50,000 people dead on the highway every year and hundreds of thousands injured and billions of dollars of property damage. Of course, it's all very good for the economy. The, uh, the bankers and the insurance companies all like that because it keeps the economy flowing. Don't forget, anytime there's a disaster, there's money to be made in it. Absolutely. Anyway, we're going to come down to one lane here. And I'm going to be turning left on my favorite road, Skyline Boulevard. And head over to Canyon, thereby passing the entire Highway 26. Oh look, here comes a TriMet Road Bus Driver. It's very cold out today, by the way. I mean, it's cold, cold, cold. All right. Okay, you're gonna, there you go, you did good. All right, anybody coming the other way? No. We can just sneak right into the turn and see how many bicycles we've run into today. All right, so what's going on at TriMet? Well, the biggest news is the new board member. We have a new board member from Tiger. And guess what, folks? You'd never believe it, but he's an insider. Woo! -hoo. And he's a high-powered insider at that. He ain't just some ordinary insider. This is the ex-city manager of Tiger, who also was the treasurer of Tiger, I guess. And he was also on the city council of Lake Oswego. Now, here's a little scaredy cat Volvo going 20 miles an hour around the corner. They are going 25, and I guess that is actually the speed limit. Boy, it seems so slow, doesn't it? Uh, well, you can't blame somebody for going to speed limit. I mean, as long as they go to the speed limit, it seems like a snail's pace, though, to me. It's like, Jesus, 25 down Skyline Boulevard? How could they be so silly as to make it? The speed limit is such a ridiculous amount here. Uh, 
Yeah, so he's a and he's a big rail supporter, which will make a lot of people happy. Well, of course they're gonna have rail supporters. They're not gonna ever put in a person who doesn't support the master game plan for light rail city, which is light rail street car. Anything with a rail is what they like. Commuter rail, light rail, streetcar, as long as it's got a rail. This administration, these people that are holding the keys to our city, these one percenters, as we like to call them now, we have a whole new name for them. And TriMet, this, this is actually a very, very good microcosm of the one percenters. How the one percenter are controlling, you know, we're talking about the management and the board in cahoots with the management and the governor who's all in cahoots with all of them making all the policies that benefit developers and don't actually help transit right or he's all over the road this maybe he's drunk or something you better slow down buddy it's 25 you might do something reckless at 25 mile an hour uh, let's see who's driving this car anyway yeah the uh you know they're no best you know you know, they're still, I'm sure they still have their grandiose plans of uh, light rail dreams to high heaven, you know. We're going to still build tunnels and light rail to Tiger and light rail up our, uh, light rail up Burnside and light rail here and light rail there and streetcars over there. See, the fact that there's an actual budget problem doesn't actually affect them. This old lady in that Volvo. Uh, that's just a side, you know, it doesn't matter, and you know, we don't need, we don't care about the budget because we're going to get these light rails in and we don't care how we have to pay for it later. You see, the thing is, this is the beauty of it, the, uh, the money comes in from the feds to build it, or most of it, not all of it. And all, all of it's tax money, which means, you know, it's nobody's actual money other than the, uh, people who are getting a hold of it with the contracts and all of that. It's not... It's not actually anybody's, uh, you know, it's not Neil's money. He makes a big, big killing on it, and so does everybody who's getting paid out of it. But it doesn't matter whether it's city money, federal money. I've always had a big argument with the uh, people that go, oh, it's the feds, it's the feds, it's not us. It, and I always go back to the great post that Jack Bogdansky had, uh, I don't know, it was a while ago now, where he talked about the pockets theory. Of, of funding the pockets well the left pocket has been set aside for that so you can't have it out of the left pocket and i'm sorry to have to tell you but the right pocket is empty so you have to go hungry today because the left pocket is to buy ourselves a brand new sofa and the right pocket which was for food sorry but you know the sofa pocket is still full so we get the sofa we never we never move we never changed the idea of the pocket. And those of us that understand the way things really work is these, the government is the conduit for corporate power. It's taking our tax money and putting it in the hands of the corporate elite and those associated with it, you know, the executive class. And some of it does actually trickle down, I mean, you know, but the, the contractor money, the money, the big boondoggle money, is, uh, is is sent right to the pockets of the people that own everything. And you look at the West, for example, a company that went bankrupt. And even after the bankruptcy was announced and the company was out of business, Fred Hansen continued paying the $30,000 a month salary of the founder of Colorado Railcar while they finished. They continued paying his salary. That's how absurd this whole government they call it a partnership is more like a theft as the government elite steal our tax money our citizens to our money the money that I paid out of my check okay and hand it over to fat cats who are not actually providing any services you know they're not doing anything for it you know at least I when I'm getting my paycheck at least I know that I'm actually transporting actual real live citizens of this community from point A to point B and actually really providing a service that those people that are being transported actually need. They actually need me. Okay, they need to have what I'm doing. And that's, wouldn't, they wouldn't be able to get on this bus if it wasn't for me and the mechanic that keeps the thing running. Okay.
okay, so I feel good about getting my tax money because I'm doing something for it. I'm, I'm actually, I'm actually doing a, a service that goes back into the community. And whereas you have people like Neil McFarlane, Mary Fetch, uh, all of the people in the office, they're not actually providing anything to the community. They're providing zero effort to the community, zero. So they provide nothing to the community. And they're just playing these bureaucratic games, you know. They're, they're playing games with the uh, bureaucracy and meetings and funding mechanisms and legal contracts. They're, they're leeches of the, gov of the government system because they don't actually provide a service. Of course you need to have some people to keep things in order. You, I'm not saying you get rid of all management, but you, you don't need... I bet you if they got rid of 9 out of 10 managers at TriMet, 9 out of 10, there'd be no effect on the actual operation. And I've said it a million times before, you know, if I don't come to work, people might not get home tonight. They're stranded. If Neil McFarlane doesn't come to work, nobody, nobody's affected. Nobody. Except a bunch of bureaucrats who's, who don't care. Their real world life doesn't get it, is not affected by any of the actual uh, bureaucrats. They're not going to trickle down. Anything they do doesn't trickle down here. You know, they make life difficult for us because if they didn't do that, they wouldn't have a real job. You know, and, you know. And the Peggy Hansen, uh, Steve Banta, they they knew how to. They, at least they understood how to run an operation. You know, if if the HR department would get on the ball and actually figure out how to recruit people. We wouldn't have all these high-profile cases here, but uh, and I said it on uh, Portland Transport. <coughs> or, no, I said it on that uh, guy, Dr. Jeff. His his blog. I said that the reason they have such crappy people is because it's a crappy job, and the way that it's set up, the way that they have it set up, it's not going to attract good people because you have to go part time do the training, part time. Uh, you know, you start low, and so anybody with a family, of course, isn't going to go through that. Most people are not going to go and do that. You know, you, you have to start out, and then you got to work through the seniority shit, and then you got to go, then you got to go full time all the way to the back of the seniority shit again, and you know, you're working all hours of the day, all hours of the night, weekends forever. You never get weekends off around here. So if you have any kind of family. You don't want this. You don't really want this job. You, you, it's not. It's not family friendly. So, being the job characteristics are poor, that leads to a very poor pool of people in terms of who we're going to get to uh, work here. And that's why we have so many of these seemingly high-profile incidents. You know, they have a uh, not a very good pool of people to draw from. Even with their pay and benefits, which is getting steadily worse, and you are abused by the public and you are abused by the management, it's a very hard environment to exist in, especially if your consciousness level is low. For example, a baby bus driver who's back now, and she really believes she didn't do anything wrong. I mean, she actually believes it. So in other words, she doesn't understand how that situation happened strictly because of her. She doesn't think she had any role in the situation. Now, how would anybody actually believe that? How would anybody actually believe that they had no role in that situation? Well, there's only one answer. They have a very low consciousness level. They don't understand the effect their actions are having on other people. And, and that means you're having a very, you're having people working that don't understand how their actions affect other people. And there couldn't be a worse personality type to have this kind of job. Somebody who doesn't understand how their actions are affecting their passengers.